You're listening to Simperts Radio, episode number 198. And this is the special interview with Enneagram Type 9. Welcome to Simple Roots Radio with Alexa Sherm. Alexa believes that simplicity in life is the key to achieving true and lasting health. And now your host, Alexa Sherm. Welcome back to this podcast. As always, my name's Alexa, and this is the place to get healthy, live happy, and find more joy. I'm thrilled that you're here. And the very last episode of the Enya Health series, I mean, I have loved every single minute of this show of learning about all the different Enneagram numbers and just what they bring to the table. I don't even think I realized how big of a difference this could make in your health until I got through the entire series. And I realized that while I might recommend the same general ideas to everyone, what that looks like for each specific Enneagram type and more specifically for each person is so incredibly different. It goes to show that we can't just do these things to expect results, but we have to understand ourselves enough to know, is this good for me? And it really all comes back to, what does health look like to you? If your body could talk, what would it tell you? And how can you choose to love and honor and respect that more? Not what other people are telling you to do, but do you and what your body needs. That is my mission behind this series. And if you're new to this and you haven't listened to my whole ramblings on redefining self-care, you have to go back and listen to episode number 180, where this whole Enya Health series kicked off. And then I encourage you to go back and listen to all the other Enneagram numbers because it is mind-blowing how similar and yet different we are. And if we just hold true to how our body works, how our mind works, how our thinking, our personality, and we just honor that, how much easier health would be on the other side. So that's my encouragement through this entire series is to not just make health something you do, but who you are. And to make it who you are, you have to know who you are. So that's what this is about. Today, we're breaking down Enneagram Type 9 with my friend, Alana Cook. Now, I love Alana. I've known her for a while, and she is really, really knowledgeable about the Enneagram, specifically the Enneagram 9, which Enneagram 9s in general tend to be pretty private people. And so this is a real honor to have her on the show, to be so vulnerable and real and honest, to tell us about her Enneagram, how she's found health in the midst of the struggles and the hurdles of that Enneagram, and how she can utilize those strengths to really overcome this. If you're an Enneagram 9, you are going to connect so deeply with Alana. I know it, and I hope that this interview is just a wealth of knowledge and encouragement to help you on your own journey. But before we get to the show, as always, make sure you go to the show notes at simperitswellness.com backslash 198 to get the free download for Enneagram Type 9s and how to make health more into your everyday routines and rhythms. Download that, start to implement just one thing at a time and get the ball rolling. So that's my encouragement to you today. But for now, let's get right to the show and welcome Alana. Alana, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. We've known each other for a while, probably longer than it's even registering in my head. (laughs) But I'm so pumped to have you on to learn about Enneagram nines. I do know a few, but just to be honest, like this is the first time I've really studied nines and I have so many questions for you. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course. Okay. So (laughs) my first question is, is can you just give us a brief overview of what an Enneagram nine is? what you love about it, and what you struggle with. Okay. So the Enneagram 9 is kind of known as the peacemaker. We tend to just kind of be go with the flow, chill people. Um, Mm -hmm. And we tend to focus more on peace. So we really want external and internal peace, but we'll settle just for external peace at the most. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So we really try to maintain relationships that are, we're conflict avoidant. So we don't want to have any conflict in our relationships. We tend to flee from it. And so I think the best thing about being a nine is um, just the ability to connect with people. We tend to be um, less judgmental, so we can really see all sides. And when we're listening to people, we can really understand them and create a connection with them in that. Mm -hmm. 
I think the hardest thing is nines tend to struggle with, um, they call it the sin of the sloth. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So we tend to be a little bit lazier, um, harder to just lazier in all aspects from emotional, um, relational and physical. So, um, I think that's something I definitely struggle with is just showing up for my, um, feelings for my people and just for myself. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we go back to like that sloth, it's, in my understanding, it's more of an, is it an overwhelm of there's so much going on and it's just like that crave for, for solitude. Is that Uh, really what it is? It can be. We, um, we're really comfort seekers. So Mm -hmm. we want to be comfortable in our world and we tend to go when we are overwhelmed, we tend to go into our comfort seeking mode. Mm. So like nines go to three in strength, which you're a three, right? (laughs) I'm a, I, I thought I was. So the last time we talked, I thought I was a three. Uh, I think last time we really talked about this was like on the streets of Galena, I feel like. Um, and I thought I was totally a three, but I've learned I'm a two with the three. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. So eights or nines go to threes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so we can definitely be high achievers and really hard workers and definitely be those motivated people. But when we're really overwhelmed by life, we tend to go slink back into comfort Mm -hmm. seeking and, um, those kind of things. Yeah. And I want to get to that aspect because while your sin is like this sloth Mm -hmm. really in health, you guys are like, I mean, achievers, creative, like you're a lot of things. In fact, I heard a quote that nines are the most similar to every other type on the Enneagram yeah. than any type is, yeah. which is a detriment, but it can also in health be used as an asset. Yeah. So I heard this quote, it was like the only type the nine is not like is the nine itself. <laughs> yeah. And, and so is all of this, like, do you think the slothness comes? I mean, I just kind of asked that question, but is it a disconnection? Discon- because Nines, in my understanding, are very disconnected from their awareness. Yes. Mm-hmm. So is it all, is like the overwhelm caused by disconnection from what you want? It's like giving and, and kind of being the chameleon of the types of like fitting in with every other person, which is what people love about nines. Mm-hmm. But is that also why you kind of have this slothness? Like that you, you're just so disconnected from what you actually want? Yeah. I think that a lot of times I get over, like just me personally, I get overwhelmed with what I'm trying to be for everyone else. And so then I get really tired. (laughs) Mm, (laughs) A lot Mm -hmm. of times, like as nines, we tend to think that we only have this certain amount of energy and we're not realizing how much emotional energy we're expelling on um, other things. Um, Mm -hmm. Like you said, we have all, we have a lot of similarities with all the types. Um, So it can really be just this pull of trying, I sometimes think of it as your inner self, just trying to like get you to sit with yourself for a while. (laughs) Right, right. Yeah. Just to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I, I was looking at the things that uh, Enneagram nine likes, like routines and comfort and those are all really strong things, but I feel like there's this like little shift that's making them unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Like that can take them from being really healthy things to really unhealthy things. And I guess I'm trying to understand what is that shift (laughs) in there that takes you from being like, okay, if we had healthy routines, they would be really good. But sometimes these routines that are established are coming from the wrong place maybe, but I can't figure out what that, what that is. Yeah. So I feel like I am not a nine that loves routine. I find it really constricting, but it's when I try to set up productive routines. Mm, Yeah. (laughs) But in like my day to day, I do have routines that slow me down. So I Mm. tend to have to like take a break and like, you know, Mm -hmm. which be good, but I also don't, I don't give myself enough of an opportunity to accomplish things because I'm more focused on, I don't really want to be that uncomfortable. I don't want to be that worn out by the end of the day. I don't want to be, you know, Uh so um, I feel like we can definitely take things to the extreme or, um, 
to create them to be an unhealthy when we're not um, intentional about what we're doing, which a lot of times we tend to live in a dreamland. So Mm -hmm. we very, I would say in general, we're not very intentional people except about our relationships. Mm. Even that kind of swells and fades, you know, it kind of depends. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. And so when we talk about your energy levels and kind of like these hurdles that you face with that, I see it relating to a lot of your relationships, which I mean, for everyone is very important, but I guess I didn't recognize just how important that was and and not just the relationship, but the harmony of the relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so really when you say like, I don't have the energy to necessarily focus on yourself or to be aware of that, that is literally just coming from like the, the so much energy, like the emotional energy that you're putting into the people in your life. Yes. I tend to spend a lot of my days very focused on um, my relationships, the people that I care deeply about and trying to make sure they're okay, make sure that I'm there Mm -hmm. for them and trying to fix whatever problems that we have going on. I can be very, very focused on those kind of things that I wear myself out mentally. So, or I'm stuck. Yeah. The other sense. Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes sense. And I just have to be honest, I have a Enneagram nine as a mom and you guys make (laughs) wonderful moms (laughs) at the expense of everything of you. (laughs) I I don't know. I hope that my kids think that when they're older. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it is this like balance now of like, even when I view my own mom, I think, wow, she invested so much into us that she really did set aside her own life Mm -hmm, for us. And that's got to be so common for a nine, right? Like to just kind of like lay down what you want Mm -hmm. in order to establish and maintain and not to establish and maintain, but to make sure you care for the people in your life at no recognition either. Like that's what always amazes me. Yeah, I think like for us, though, it's really easy. We don't necessarily think about it of giving up what we want because we don't have this strong sense of identity of this is what I want and I'm giving it up for you. So I think it's like easy for us because we don't have our strong um, desires, which I think helps in in like the not being like resentful (laughs) towards people. Right. Right. Yeah. This is like, I mean, I feel like twos are a little bit similar in like just the relational component, but we like the recognition Mm -hmm. to be known for helping people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm so terrible, but it's like, you guys are just like the quiet peacemakers that really do just come and pick up the pieces. So when you say that, like it is easier, do you think though, like in health that it has to come from a place of finding yourself or finding something that you want to live for? What does that look like to establish that confidence to, Mm -hmm. you know, like, cause I think that there has to be a healthy balance because obviously these are like gifts the world needs, but on the other hand, it can't be at the expense of right depressing everything you are. Right. Yes. I feel like when I stayed at home, that was a really big struggle I had because I, I have like, um, a good sense of who I am and what I like to do and what I want to be and all of those kind of things, because I do have that achiever kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um, so I think that nines, we can really repress it where at some point it will come bubbling out. Um, so mm. we're aware of what we want and we can just create boundaries for ourselves, like giving ourselves our own time. I can often just like want to not give myself any time because everybody else has needs and mine aren't important. Mm. When I do that, I end up injuring myself because at some point I just come crashing down like nobody cares about me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah, I myself time to be who I am and giving myself room to grow and what I want to do. And like live in my creativity and my desires. Instead, I give them up to everyone else. So I think we can have a really dangerous way of um, making ourselves unimportant, even to ourselves, where we just end up, it comes up at some point, because every person has 
every person is important. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and right. And we all have things that we need and, and it's okay to need things because we're all human. Mm-hmm. And what has that look like in establishing boundaries in your life for that? Um, so I have to kind of really make sure that I like budget in time for, um, alone time. I'm an introvert too. Um, so Mm -hmm. there's definitely like, I can't give people out of a, like, I can't just be so exhausted with other people that I've, then I'm just not able to really be helpful because I'm so, so consumed with just exhaustion and I'm feeling alone or I'm feeling like uninspired (laughs) or, Mm -hmm. you know, I just haven't, I've allowed this chaos to kind of, um, sit inside of me without acknowledging it because I'm worrying about other people. So I think that's, uh, when I've given myself the time to a accomplish things I want to want to do and force myself to do the things I don't want to do that do bring me peace, like cleaning my house (laughs) Mm -hmm. because I want to escape those hard things. When I do give myself those, I um, definitely feel more at home in my own like self and my own, I'm able to have the boundaries that I need Mm -hmm. in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes sense. So when I was kind of studying some of these like health changes and health ideas, because what I'm learning about in Enneagram nine is is like this almost disconnection creates this like un I don't want to say unwilling, but like it's almost like health isn't even a priority, right? Because we're so worried about relationships. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was sorry. I was thinking about your questions and like things of health. And I was like, health for nines is so hard because we don't think mm-hmm. about it. It doesn't like come in, like a priority for us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was um surprised at how difficult it actually was mm-hmm. to write up requirements. And and I think for the whole, like my whole idea with the Enneagram series, right? And and this idea with self-care is not just what what we've placed self-care to be like bath bombs and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like kind of all, all of this like jargon that we have for self-care, but it's like knowing yourself enough to know what it looks like to actually take care of, of your soul, of, of your mind, of your body. Right. Because that's important because it's going to help you to go out and, and do what you were designed to do. Yes. But with that, with an Enneagram nine, like you said, it's almost, I don't want to say it's not on the radar because I feel like on some level you're aware of it, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. But it's, but it's the the energy is not, it's not a priority or maybe a top value of an Enneagram nine. For sure. Not a, yeah, (laughs) it's not 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 comfortable to be healthy in a lot of the choices that you have to make. And so we're focused on making things easy in that aspect. And like working on the like harder aspects of the life that we have with people and the like things that we have to do where we, Mm. um, we tend to come last and health therefore Mm. comes last. Yeah. So when I was thinking about this, is there also a change component for a nine of maybe change is like something that you see as difficult or not something that you want or is change not a part of like, would you say like you have a difficult time changing just like change in general, or is that not a part of this? Like, am I missing that? Yeah, no, I think, um, a lot of times we're okay with the status quo Mm -hmm. (laughs) because that's comfortable. It's like, it has that external piece that we want, even if internally we're not feeling okay about the status quo, keeping the status quo is what's going to keep things on the outside fine. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's kind of what makes change really hard is because we are afraid of the conflict and the hardship that will come Mm -hmm, from. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when we, when I started to put together some healthy ideas <laughs> and mm-hmm. how you can leverage your Enneagram number mm-hmm. 
I feel like this was a really, really difficult balance of creating, finding comfort and health. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it is partly a mindset. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, um, I found that Enneagram nines often look at health as a diet aspect, as a restriction, starvation, yeah. deprivation, um, more into the diet, the diet yes. mentality rather than what I feel like could really help, uh, Enneagram nine get healthy is like the idea of how can I just fill myself up with nourishing foods? So I have more energy to give right. my people. Right. Does that resonate more? Yes. So actually, um, I definitely think about food <laughs> that way, even exercise, I dread it. And I always like think mm-hmm. like that, I, that is energy. I'm not going to get back, you know? Uh, <laughs> right. But mm-hmm. I've recently changed the way that I've eat it, been eating and I have learned that I have to do it with somebody. I have to have either someone in mm-hmm. really encouraging me or someone doing it with me so that I have that going for me. And I've learned that I feel a lot better when I eat this way, not yes. as hard as I yeah. made it out to be in my mind. And so when uh-huh. I learned that, I felt like it's only been a few weeks, but I've like been able to mentally get over the hurdle of it's going to take me forever and it's not going to like, it's not going to taste good. It's just like, it's not going to be easy where I can just go out and grab mm-hmm. something or eat like a granola bar in my pantry. <laughs> right. Right. You know? Yeah. So I think like I've had to have someone along with me to be able to finally get to that. Uh Um, point. I definitely think that what you're saying is um, so true. We just have to have someone a lot of times help us get there Uh because I do feel like I can stick with something when I've learned that it actually does, like you said, give you more energy and be able to like feel better. So, um, when I've learned that I have more energy to do that. And then I've learned that I can do hard things. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And that's what I think is so cool about the Enneagram nine is that while you have these tendencies to kind of not do much as it relates to your health, I think the encouragement on the other side is once you start doing it and you like put your nose to the grind and actually start getting into that, like to recognize that this is good and this does make me feel better. And it does give me more energy. I feel like you were really apt to stick with it. Yeah. Like I, my sister is a one. And so we've both kind of changed our eating together. And I think what we've learned is like, she is like you said, just really like determined. She's ready to go full on extreme. And I think as a nine, I've been able to bring a balance of like people tend to burn out when they go full Mm -hmm. extreme and don't give themselves any room for the things that they are used to. And yeah, we tend to burn out. So I think a nine can bring the balance of like reality (laughs) Yeah, while we're changing slowly, but to be able to stick with it is a lot of times, like they say a good diet is one that you can stick with. And Mm -hmm. that is bringing that healthy balance into your life. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think on some level, some form of comfort. And I, again, I think a lot of the, the hurdle for a nine is really just the mindset of what we've been told is healthy Mm -hmm. versus coming to a reality of no, what is healthy for you? Mm -hmm. And I hope that brings some comfort to an Enneagram nine, because I think it can be a massive frustration and almost a huge turnoff. Like um, from the nines that I've know, like including my mom, you know, like she has done mm-hmm. the diet train and almost been a part of this all or nothing. And maybe part of that is just this conforming to like the people are year around mm-hmm. as like, oh, I saw all these people doing it. You know, they asked me to join, so I'm going to do it. Like, it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to jump on the train because that they're doing it. And this is what the world's taught us, but only to end up on the other side super frustrated and let down and recognizing how much energy was spent on that Mm -hmm. without, I think the aspect of really feeling good. Right. And so it is that balance of like, I think that there is important to have people with you, especially like even when I was looking at exercise, like 
exercise for a nine is just not something that you ever think about doing, right? No, but <laughs> ever want to do. Right. But if you did it, like if you just went on a walk with a friend, mm-hmm. I feel like that is maybe a better concept for a nine than doing it alone. Yes. And having um, accountability. So like having someone that's going to ask me, did you work out? I don't want the conflict of being like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And I have to deal with those negative like emotions. So like a lot of times when my mom will text me and ask me, Hey, have you been working out? And I'm like, Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they'll be like, okay, like, come on. It just, I need the, I need, I always need someone just right there with me, making me take care of myself kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. And earlier you kind of mentioned that you don't feel like you're a very routine oriented person. Mm -hmm. You feel like that's, maybe I'm missing this. Is it more like, I mean, I feel like nines get them and maybe this is just the ones that I know, like they're very, routine about what they eat. Like it's very habitual. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that you don't feel like in general, like your personality is just not against routine or you, or you feel like that would be a healthy place for you to get to use healthy routines in your life? Yes. I feel like I do way better in life when I have a routine. Mm. I tend to like fight against them because I feel like they're really constricting. (laughs) I'm kind of, um, a free spirited person where I just really fly by the seat of my pants most of the time. Mm -hmm. So routines can be really hard for me to a maintain and b just feel like they give me enough space to be myself. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. when I do have a routine of like, even just like a routine of eating, like waking up, eating, cleaning work, blah, blah, blah then I feel a lot better. I feel a lot more in control and sure of myself, but we always have then this like desire to, maybe it's just my sinful desires to (laughs) not have to be controlled Mm -hmm. by that, but um, (laughs) routines really help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe it's a balance of like, even when you're talking about working out, like those aren't things that necessarily an Enneagram nine looks forward to, (laughs) but I feel like if you had a routine of that, that made you feel good, like you said, you tend to feel good all day, but also establishing a routine of having like slow Saturday mornings or like, kind of like, I don't want to say a reward on the other side, but creating this balance of, Hey, I'm going to do these healthy things, but I'm also going to take care of my space. And what I really crave is that comfort and creating comfort as a part of your routine too. You know, cause I think like the diet mentality is like, do this, do this, do this, not that. And I think yeah. that is a really damaging mindset for everyone, but especially Enneagram nines to filter through that seems too stiff and rigid almost. Yes. I feel like, um, a lot of nines are what I call frustrated perfectionists. So we want to be like this perfect mm, yeah. thing, but then when we can't be it, we just decide not to be it at all. <laughs> So when we have set, like we've had this routine and like, I used to have a really great working out routine. Then I had like some health problems that Mm -hmm. broke me out of it. And then it was like, oh, well, it didn't work last time. It's not going to work again and I'm not going to be perfect at it. So therefore, whatever. So we kind of give up on the hard things because we have this frustration of not being able to maintain I think frustration with ourselves because we do tend to have like that struggle with um, inertia. (laughs) So created with ourselves when we've had like a day that we didn't do what we were supposed to do. And so we're like, well, just screw it. We're not doing it at all. (laughs) Yeah. It's really the lie that's like believing that it's not worth the effort for something that you don't think you can achieve. Right. Right. Like it's like that underlying lie as opposed to kind of looking at the overall goal of maybe how you feel and how this could uh, get you back in tune with your body also to create more space to do the things that Enneagram nines are really great at. And that's maintaining friendliness and being that mediator that we all need the nine to be right. Mm -hmm. So when you look at some like healthy habits or lifestyle rhythms, 
and your life at, as, you know, the course of your life and the ebb and flow of that, what do you feel like some things that really did work or really did resonate with you that could be helpful for other nines? Um, so I think like for me that when I was just thinking about things that I can do to be healthier and I was really thinking about just like the teeny tiniest things, (laughs) I really, Mm -hmm. I started to just carry a water bottle around with me that I have, I have like a 16 to 32 ounce water bottle with me all the time. And I drink it first thing in the morning. I don't drink coffee really. Um, I am a social coffee drinker and I really feel like being able to do like a teeny easy thing, like just drinking a lot of water that's helped cut Mm -hmm. out soda and sometimes even just like snacking, Mm -hmm. going for the unhealthy snacks because I'm bored or whatever. Drinking water has been something that's been easy for me to add into just maintaining my health. Um, This kind of goes with routine, which it just leaning into my one wing. Mm -hmm. I'm not a very strong wing of either side, but making lists. So like grocery lists, even intentionally giving myself healthy, like things to eat, snack, not filling my fridge up with crap and definitely not grocery shopping when I'm hungry. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I think it is that awareness, right. For a nine to understand, okay, these are the things that I struggle with. And one of them is mindless eating. Mm -hmm. And most of that is to fill a void of trying to kind of suppress the stress or, um, because nines live in the anger triad, which is hilarious to me because you're the least angry people, (laughs) but you, you mask it, right? Like it's there. You just mask it. And almost what I was reading have the hardest time energy wise in the gut triad, because like eights kind of have this outward expression of anger Mm -hmm. and ones almost have this inner anger, but you kind of almost, um, you suppress both. Like, you know, like, it's just kind of like this, you're, you're working so hard to maintain harmony, which is so incredibly difficult for any human. And it does like giving yourself permission to recognize how much energy that does take and how little people recognize that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like there's that awareness component to like, okay, how do I, how do I cope with that? Because you're coping. And a lot of people are coping with food or with mindless eating or just laying on the couch, watching binge watching Netflix, which I feel like all of those things can be good, but it's, it's the way that we, we approach them and recognizing like that binge on Netflix probably isn't actually going to help me deal. Right. (laughs) So how have you learned some, um, healthier coping mechanisms or how, I mean, maybe what I'm even trying to ask at a deeper level is how do you gain that awareness as a nine to recognize, okay, this is just how I'm feeling and be aware of that. Like wh- where's your level of awareness and how can we get a deeper awareness that you actually act on? Right. So I am married to an eight. Um, he's yes. <laughs> a very strong eight. So he wears his anger on his sleeve. And, um, <laughs> every I, emotion on his sleeve. <laughs> and so I've learned a lot. I think every nine needs an eight in their life. I don't tend to recognize anger. I, I don't tend to even think that I'm possibly angry at somebody. I just can think of like, maybe I'm just frustrated or that mm, hurtful mm-hmm. and, and not even being angry in any way, shape or form. And I've learned from because nines and eights can both have a strong justice complex. We just tend to, nines tend to let it go when it doesn't keep the peace. So Mm -hmm. it can really frustrate us internally. I've learned um, to, first of all, just like allow myself to be angry with something and not just sit in it, but know that it's okay if I tell somebody that. (laughs) I've Mm -hmm. learned that from... Mm -hmm. William, because a lot of times he's said something he's angry about and somebody was able to be like, oh, hey, I didn't realize that that hurt you. I'm so sorry. And, and he wasn't Mm -hmm. rejected for it. He wasn't like crucified for it, you know? And so I think Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about being able to express the anger. And as a nine, we have, we have the ability to express it without hurting somebody. We are very careful with people. Mm. 
And so we can say these things and still be heard and also be very aware of how the other person is feeling. But I think Mm -hmm. being able to allow yourself to recognize your anger and those emotions that it does create more peace when you're not holding it inside of yourself. So nines have to be willing to show up and do the hard work of dealing with their emotions. And we have to be, we have to allow ourselves to have them. Otherwise they Mm -hmm. erupt out eventually. It just like, then we kind of surprise ourselves like, Oh my gosh, where did that come from? Right. (laughs) Plenty of those moments. And it's just kind of like, Oh my gosh, why am I exploding over this teeny tiny thing? And then I think about all the things that built up to that, where I'm really not maintaining internal peace. I'm just ignoring everything and pretending I'm fine. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's almost like, like slow steps of vulnerability of kind of letting yourself do little baby steps of trying something and watching other people and seeing what works for them. Yeah. I think allowing ourselves to learn from each other, because I don't think a lot of other types have as much of a struggle with anger as we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to kind of go along with that question, what grace do Enneagram nines need to give themselves? I think that we need to give ourselves the grace in that we are a person with needs and that's okay. (laughs) So we tend to want to minimize ourselves and not put ourselves out there because we're more worried about other people. And that's great because we can help other people to feel important and needed and worthy and, but we don't give that same thing to ourselves. Mm like the, the feeling of leaning on other people. So a lot of times we can really mm-hmm. struggle with vulnerability or we'll ask a lot of questions about you. And if you don't ask us back, we're not going to tell you because we just assume that you don't want to know. Mm-hmm. And that's not always true. Um, and so we need to give ourselves the grace of like allowing ourselves to be a person that does take up space and that it's okay to take up space. People want us to take up space. They care about us enough to want us to be there and not make ourselves smaller. Mm -hmm. So I think allowing ourselves to experience the full range of emotions and telling people like, Hey, that hurt, or that was really fun. I really enjoyed that. But we don't have, we don't oftentimes allow ourselves to bring forward our opinions and our feelings because we don't want to burden somebody else with them. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. And as others who are not Enneagram nines, um, who definitely get the full benefit from Enneagram nines, how could we encourage you? Um, I think just remembering your nine friends. I think a lot of times nines tend to really struggle with feeling forgotten and lonely. We want, Mm -hmm. we really want to be important to people but oftentimes we're there for other people and it doesn't always feel like they're there for us um, because we're the ones reaching out and not oftentimes the ones being reached out to. Mm-hmm. Like encouraging your nine is just really being there for them, hearing what's going on with their life, what they're trying to do and growing in their health and whatever else is going on in their life. It really encourages a nine to not shrink back into that kind of comfort seeking overwhelmed thing when we don't have to deal with the emotions of feeling like not seen by other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, it's, uh, it's, um, when I read that, like I can totally see how a nine just feels so forgotten and it is so easy to, to use a nine and to see that they're always going to be there, but forget that the nine has needs too, because you're so quiet about Mm -hmm. it. And I think it's just an awareness that all of us need to have. Like I said, I grew up with a mom nine and I'm only now just starting to understand of like, oh, (laughs) maybe we should appreciate mom a little bit more for what she did for us. (laughs) That sounds terrible, but she was a fantastic mom, you know, and I don't, I don't think we always let her know that because she was just always there and quiet about what she needed and just giving and not just giving to us, but giving to everyone around us. Um, And starting to recognize how little people see what a nine actually does on a day-to-day basis, I think is important, especially for the nine types, because you do tend to be the quiet, 
peacemakers. Yes. And humble, extremely humble people, (laughs) which is so fantastic. So Alana, I thank you so much for being here. Um, But before we go, I have a few quick fire questions just for fun. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So in, in a dream world, what would be the first thing you do every morning for your health? Now I know I'm just going to preface this and say like health is usually not on your radar, Mm -hmm. but if you had to do something every morning that made you feel good, what would that be? Or what do you do that makes you feel good every morning? Um, in a dream world where my kids didn't wake up early, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) I would have time to read my Bible, um, probably practice some yoga or something and take a shower and get ready for the day. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. Do you have anything specific that you really try to like one thing that you try to focus on every day? Um, in the morning or is it just kind of, it's hard for nine. Cause when kids wake up, then it's like, you're, you're right into that relation. Almost. Yeah. I think for me, um, something I really do is I just at least make sure that I have brushed my teeth and cleaned my face because I feel a lot better and more alert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just the little things like the little <laughs> everyday things that really do make a difference. Okay. What's your favorite, I want to say health book or book that has really helped you to come to be a a healthier Enneagram or a healthier person in general? Um, so a book I really, really liked was um, Quiet by Susan Kane. I believe that's her name. Okay. It's about um, introversion and just, I think that that book, I mean, it made, it brought me to tears because it just made me feel very validated as an introverted person um, mm-hmm. to be okay with being quiet and being myself. Yeah. Yeah. I will make sure and link that up in the show notes. I haven't heard of it, but I'm sure it can help so many people. And the last one is what's the best piece of advice you've ever received and want to leave us with? Um, I don't know that I've received it, but I read it. (laughs) Yeah. It's by Brene Brown. And it was just sometimes the best and bravest thing you can do is to show up. Mm, Yeah. That is such a good quote. And, um, I think it's for every Enneagram number. Yeah. Um, really important. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks. I love what you know about the Enneagram and just, um, just being willing to share and be vulnerable with us about this stuff, because it's not always easy to be on a podcast and, and to talk about your weaknesses, <laughs> um, and then to follow it up with strength. So thank you so much for being here. I, um, will make sure and link all that you talked about in the show notes today. So thank you again, Alana. Bye. Man, wasn't that real and honest? And it just felt so right. Thank you so much, Alana, for being on the show and just sharing so much information about Enneagram Type 9s. It literally has blown my mind. And as I mentioned, my mom is actually an Enneagram Type 9, so it has been so awesome and fascinating to learn about her. Even though I grew up with her, Enneagram Type 9s just have this way about just kind of shoving who they are under the rug, like doing all the things without ever showing anyone that or needing the attention behind that, I mean, it really is fascinating. So if you're an Enneagram type nine, I hope that left you feeling encouraged and empowered and really motivated to put health back into your own hands. I know you love to care for everyone else around you and we thank you so much for that, but we really want to see you care for yourself in the same way. So I think it's time to do that. And, and so if you need a permission slip, here it is, Enneagram Type 9s, you can care for yourself. In fact, it is the most important job that you will ever have. And the more you care for yourself, the more you can care for others. So I hope that you take some information, pick just one thing that you want to implement into your life, get that momentum going, and once you're in motion, you'll stay in motion. That's a beautiful thing. So with that, don't forget to head to the show notes at simperitswellness.com backslash 198 to get all the information on today's show. Learn more about Enneagram Type 9 and share this with your friends and family. Given Enneagram Type 9s tend to be pretty quiet, private people, I think it's important to encourage all the other people out there who are nines, who are maybe standing behind the curtain, not asking for attention or seeking any kind of advice or help, but give to them and encourage and motivate them. So just snap a picture of this podcast, share it on social media, tell them why they should listen, and join a community of people like you who want to make health not just another thing that they have to do or live for, but a part of who they are so that you can go and live with greater purpose. That's our mission here at Simple Arts Wellness. I thank you so much for being here, for tuning in. Don't forget to head to the show notes and come back next week because this is the end of the India Health series. Next week, we're starting something new 
and I couldn't be more excited. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you back here next week.